Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today we're going to be doing a land combat guide that's for beginners, but I'm also going to expand into some more advanced techniques as well. Everyone's welcome, so let's get into the video here. The first thing that we're going to do is take Von Kuchler's army and draw a battle plan. The first part of executing a battle plan or getting prepared to execute a battle plan is assigning a front line. If this is the border with Poland, I can simply left click and make a front line here. And then you can see there are 17 divisions on this front line and there's 17 divisions in Kukler's army. Well, a front line needs a battle plan. And we're going to draw the battle plan like this, just so that it's like two hands clapping. There's guys coming down from this side and Kukler is going to go up to the river line right here. So now if we wanted to get planning bonus from this battle plan, we need to wait about 15 days. It's actually more because you can get higher max planning depending on your general skill level and the skill level is right here planning the base planning bonus is 30 percent and that takes 15 days to fill up and then kukler's here he has four in planning he gets an extra 20 percent planning bonus so he's capped at 50 so it's probably going to take him around 25 days for him to get the full battle plan bonus now let's take a step back here what does a battle plan do well if i hit the arrow up here at the top you'll see that it toggles on and off the battle plan so i can hit the red square to stop the battle plan and i can hit the arrow to execute the battle plan and the ai will take over for these units and move the, the units forward now the battle plan bonus will degenerate about one percent a day if you start manually moving units around like that, for instance, the battle plan bonus that you receive to combat will decrease faster. So ESG, isn't it better in all cases to battle plan your divisions? The answer to that is no, it's not. The more advanced technique is to take typically your armor army and you probably, you wouldn't have like all these other units in with the armor. So we could just take them out actually into another army. But you would take your mobile forces and then you draw a battle plan in a, in a, a front line here because the bonus to the battle plan, even if you're not using it, is still going to be applied uh, when you micro these units. So you see the red exclamation mark by these units. That means that they are not involved in the army's battle plan, which is fine, but they're still going to get the bonus. The bonus is just going to degenerate quicker. So Guderian has a skill of five in terms of the planning skill. So his overall bonus to these divisions is going to be 55%. So... That's quite good. And then as we micro these units around, that bonus is going to go down. OK, so if you're on a larger front with an army group, army groups are commanded by field marshals. You can have five armies underneath your field marshal. The field marshal will grant bonuses to the army group. And if you hover over the picture here, you can see that von Kluge gives negative 30% organization loss while moving. That's good. That's the green bars. So after you, if you move the division and it moves into another tile, the green bar goes down. That's combat effectiveness. When the green bar goes to zero, your division stops fighting and retreats. So it's good to keep the green bars healthy and up. And typically you want orga organizations of your divisions to be somewhere around 30. That's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so Von Kluge also gives all the other uh, types of bonuses that you see there. And then if you hover over the individual generals for the individual armies, 
you can see what type of bonuses those generals afford their army. So Guderian here, we're not going to dive into the different general traits, but Guderian here is a panzer leader and a panzer expert. So he's going to get armor division bonuses, but then you also see that he's commanding armor. So armor division attack and armor division defense is plus 10%. And furthermore, because of our military staff here, we have Erwin Rommel. Uh, the armor division attack and a de defense is further buffed, but that is not represented when you hover over the general. So a little bit confusing, but um, you guys get the idea. Making a battle plan with an overall army group is easy. You just do that with the, uh, the field marshal. So if you click the field marshal, it literally gives you everyone in that army group. You do the same thing. You click front line and then you would draw a battle plan like that. So then you can either use the field marshal's battle plan or you can draw battle plans with the individual armies to better steer the army around the battlefield. What I have done here is I pressed on front line and I pressed shift. When I create the front line is make it so that these individual armies uh, get kind of divided out evenly along the front line, but also they will unstitch. They won't unstitch. So if I just drew army battle uh, front lines with like, uh, this is Rommel's army and then von Menstein's army. What inevitably happens as the armies kind of roll forward is these two lines become unstitched and separate and create a gap for your opponent to squeeze, to squeeze through. So you don't want that. Obviously, that's bad. So one of the problems with Hearts of Iron 4 is the unstitching of the front lines. And this kind of helps with it, and it also helps... Uh, shuffling. So a lot of the times what would happen if you used a battle, a front line and a battle plan with a field marshal, for instance, is that the units would kind of move everywhere and not stay in one position. Well, that's problematic for many reasons, because if I had a division down here, walk all the way up towards Danzig to the north, they're not involved in camp combat and it's a waste of time and energy and they're not... Um, helping the war effort if they're traveling all that distance. So if you hit that shift and then you use the, the front line tool for your field marshal, it'll create a situation like this and keep everyone kind of in place moving forward. So you're just going to have to trust me on that one. It's better for the overall organization of your units. You don't have to uh, click on the individual armies and give them individual battle plans. You could just take everyone and then pop them into the field marshal battle plan if you're just more of like a macro person and you don't want to micro that much. The multiplayer way of doing this is don't turn on any battle plan. Um, just let them sit there and then micro the tanks where you want to make encirclements and move the army forward. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to make a focus video for you on whatever topic you need. Some other basic points to talk about in terms of armies is the fact that they're 24. So if you keep your army filled up 24 out of 24, you have the chance for your general to become a skilled staffer and that will allow your army size to go greater than 24. As a matter of fact, you'll go up to 30. So if you have a really good general with a skilled staffer, that could help you out quite a bit. And the way that the generals uh, get this, this role, this trait is by filling up their army 24 out of 24. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Other aspects of land combat are actually not land uh, vehicles at all. Navy and air can contribute to land combat as well. So as you can see here, I have a navy out in the middle of the lower Baltic Sea province here. I have it there for the shore bombardment. 
if this navy was in port you will not get the shore bombardment bonus that you're going to see applied as soon as we attack poland here another huge topic to cover here when you're under the strategic air map and you assign your um, air units missions at the top here when we start to go to war you're going to see red and yellow then green you want to keep the air green over your armored spearhead and what that's going to give you a few bonuses including like movement bonuses uh that you're going to need uh when we attack poland here so combined arms is always the best thing in hearts of iron 4 and irl as well you just want to make sure that you assign uh your air units the proper uh missions air superiority if you're on the offensive close air support is going to bomb the enemy's uh land div land units and then interception would be if you're getting strategic bombed or something like that that would be a behind the front line type situation so green air over where you want to go if you're on the defensive you're going to need to have the air over a province that that your opponent is going to try to attack into you on so very important points you got to pay real close attention to these things okay so let's get back into the war here so we're going to declare war against poland and then the uk and france are going to come into the battle as well so i have front lines here to defend against france so you want to make sure that you have a stockpile of infantry equipment as well as support equipment and, and whatever equipment you're attacking with really but you're going to need a pretty big stockpile if you will battle plan if you don't battle plan and you just have the tanks move you'll see how it goes here it's going to be much better and you're going to lose a lot less equipment okay so the war started let's start rolling here at three speed okay poland's attacking into me let's attack into poland We're going to try to brush these units aside. It looks like we have mud. Optimally, you probably wouldn't want to attack if you see mud in front of you there. But we're going to do it for the purposes of this video. You can pause micro. I'm not going to pause micro for the purposes of this video. We'll just keep it rolling here. And uh, what we want is the infantry to back up this front line. You can see there that there is a little bit of micro. Yeah, let's have this guy go back and help with the crossing over here. And then if you attack from two different locations, you're going to get an attack bonus. Wow, that, that happened so fast that I wasn't able to demonstrate that there. Uh, let's go into the individual battle bubbles and kind of see what's going on with a closer look here. So what you can see here is my panzer division as well as my motorized infantry division is attacking into this province here there are two polish divisions and you can see that they have almost full equipment full equipment bad bad for us because we're attacking into them right the less the tan bar there the less equipment your opponent has the less combat effectiveness they will have the green bar you can barely see it's like a sliver because they are out of organization when they are out of organization these units will have to retreat when they retreat if i move faster than them i have a chance of overrunning them the divisions that are going to be able to get these overruns are right here under heinz guderian these divisions are quite fast so if they overtake the retreating the fleeing divisions you'll get overruns overruns best thing in the game second best thing encirclements these divisions are coming around but not really uh fast enough but you can see how you need to make sure that everything kind of gets messed up here things kind of become unbalanced if you will uh with the battle plans so the front lines need to be moved up so that there are troops that are moving behind i actually have troops here um so it'd be nice if i move them up to block the advance of the opposing divisions we'll send these two guys into warsaw i want them to get there quickly so i'm going to control b and what control b is going to do is it's going to load them onto trains and then they're going to move 
to Warsaw very quickly. I can actually do it with all these, all this army. But what's going to happen is the green bar is going to go down and they're going to de-org. Since Poland is on such a defensive maneuver here, I'm not too worried about them overtaking the division. So I'm just going to send them in as quick as possible. They're going to attack and hopefully get into Danzig. And then I want to show you the bonuses that are applied by the fleet out here. Let's see how the air is going. Okay, we've got vanilla air. Why do we have vanilla air? Because the UK is meddling. It looks like they have tack bombers. 172. Oh, no, Poland's got their own stuff. They have 150 fighters from the UK, 96 from France. Okay, we don't like that. We want green air. Everything's going to move a lot quicker with green air. Let's further go into the uh, bubble here and see all the bonuses. Okay, so we have air support. Direct air support lets the divisions fight better, but it's uh, kind of yellow air, so we don't have that much air support. Our general has better reconnaissance than our opponent so he gets to a chance to choose his tactic first so the two generals will always choose a tactic uh the defending general chose assault bridge negative 25 percent tactics combat width negative five percent defender tactic damage okay so that doesn't seem to be that great Guderian, on the other hand, chose the tactic of hold bridge. With Guderian's recon bonus, he allows the, op the opposing commander to choose their tactic first. Then he can choose a tactic to counter the opposing general's tactic. So it's better to have this arrow. The different tactics obviously confer bonuses. So you're going to have to look at that on the wiki. Just want to make sure that you're turning on certain tactics. Okay, so we got an air support bonus attacking from multiple directions bonus as well. So we're attacking from two different provinces. Right here and right there. So that's the two different directional bonus. We have air superiority. So that is a debuff to our opponent. That's great. They have air support. Um... That is a debuff to us. So let's go the motorized infantry first. You can see that our bonus to attack is reduced negative 40% because we're crossing a river. If you have an opportunity to not attack across a river, that is best. River crossings add on the attack. For the defense, it's the best thing for a defensive front line. Our experience confers a 25% bonus. Experience is a very important game mechanic. You can see the different experience levels here on these badges. The star means that your regular experience, and that gives you a 25% bonus. It goes up from there to a total bonus of 75%. So if you have an elite trained division, it's really gonna be able to push. Okay, you can see that the trained experience, so these guys must have taken losses, lost some good men, and uh, then thus have less of an experience level, you can see that that confers zero bonus. And then units that are not trained uh, will actually have a debuff. Uh, and that's the, the clover here, negative 25% modifier. So that's no good. The defensive stats, uh, we defend because less effectively because of the river crossing. Um, our experience, air support, commander skill gives us those uh, bonuses there. The heart attack is when you're attacking an opponent uh, that has either hardness applied to their division, so they have some sort of tank or uh, mobile infantry, mechanized infantry, or they have, uh, you're trying to heart attack a fort. That's when heart attack comes into to play. But I don't think that we're doing much heart attack damage there. It's only 17. Soft attack is 120 though. And we're attacking a soft target. So soft attack matters most when you're attacking a soft target, obviously. Let's go on the tank side of things. The soft attack of the tank is quite good. And you can see all the bonuses there. We get that, see country there? You get a 15% bonus. That's because Erwin Rommel is our military armor genius. He's giving that bonus to the armor. So that's an interesting thing to point out there. Planning bonus, 28%. So our that will go down. So we'll check in on that a little bit later and see how that's modified. 
But with Guderian, Guderian should have had a total planning bonus of 30% plus 25, so 55. So moving those units around has taken that planning bonus down. So your initial push is going to count for more and then your your units will be more effective with your initial push than after you've been microing them like I have been for a while. Other things to point out is the, the general skill confers bonuses and the enemy does not pierce my division. If an enemy division attacking us is unable to penetrate, we will lose 50% less organization and take 50% more, 50% uh, less damage. So they're unable to penetrate us. So we lose organization less and we take 50% less damage. So you can see how much uh, piercing matters. So you guys are getting a picture here of the overall combat situation and what we need to do to help it. I don't like the fact that we don't have green air. Let's see if we're able to bring uh, more air forces to, to bear. We're really not. But what we can do, we're not able to do that. But what we can do is move this where the main combat area is. And I simply clicked on this fighter group and moved it over the main combat area. And you saw that it was more of a bland yellow to more of a bright yellow, bright yellow good. And we're gonna be able to move around a lot better when we have more air superiority. Other things to point out here, uh, used combat width. We have two divisions in here and we use 30 of 80. See the 80 here? What you wanna do ideally if you're trying to overwhelm the enemy is make your divisions in multiples of 20 so that you can fit into 80 and bring more uh, units to bear, more troops to bear. Right now, we're able to overwhelm the poor poles here with just 30 combat width. It's fine, don't think about it. But if you're in a multiplayer game where everyone's using 40 combat width, uh, then you need to get in multiples of 20. For single player, it's fine if you're in multiples of 12, 14, 18, or 20. You're probably not going to get to that 40 width. It's also unnecessary to get to that 40 width. Uh, for tanks, it might behoove you to actually just use a combat width of 10, and then you can stack the tanks together, and they're, they're going to do just fine. More planes that you put in this region, the more air superiority uh, that you will have. I'm going to create more ground crews so that basically there's more efficiency so these guys will run more missions. So now we took Warsaw and you might be asking, well, why didn't the country fall? Well, there is a mechanic called stability. And if we right click over Poland, we're able to see that Poland's stability is 42%. So that's quite low. Typically, when the country's stability is around 50% like that, I'm going to have to capture three capitals. The capitals are the stars. The star was on Warsaw. I took that first. Then the stars move to Krakow. I'm going to shoot for that next. And then the star will probably move to Grono or someplace like that. So after I take the capitals three times, I should be able to capitulate Poland. And then we'll get a peace conference. Okay, so we got some room here. Let's get some more fighters up, yeah? There's a uh, thousand capacity airport there. All right, good stuff. So I double clicked on the fighters. That will give me only the fighters. And we're going to have the fighters move up. All the fighters move up. And then you'll see that this is better for our combat effectiveness. We went red, air there. And then as soon as they're up, we're bright yellow again. So because they're inside closer to this air region, they're going to have better combat efficiency and get more air missions going. We're about to break this Polish division and then we're going to cut in through the back here. See if we can't get an overrun. Not yet. Press H for that guy and have him micro up that way. And Breslatosk is an area uh, that could turn into the capital. So you could see if you attack when they're deorged, you do much better than a unit that has entrenchment bonuses. Oh, we should stop attacking. So I made a big mistake there. 
So as you can see, the AI moves quite quickly in their own territory and encircled, and it looks like they're probably going to destroy that division. I could help that division out by giving some air superiority over it just to help out. And nope, we're going to lose it. So you can see what happens if you try to micro too hard. And I'm kind of purposefully not attacking into some of these encircled divisions because if I allow those divisions to stay up while I capitulate Poland, after Poland capitulates, I will get more equipment from the encircled divisions rather than destroying the divisions completely. So what I like to do is encircle divisions and just let them sit there. So everyone's battle plans are on and we're going to rumble forward here. If I had my battle plan on the my Poland wouldn't have been able to move as easily in front of us. And that would have been nice. Another trick that you can use is if you start an intel agency here. It will eventually give you an operative. If you put an operative and make an intel network, that will give bonuses to your battle plan, actually. So that's a good maneuver to make as well. Okay, so let's start moving these guys up. Don't be afraid of manually microing. Just know that that will decrease your battle plan stats fine and I'm microing using mainly shift right clicks and then you can actually steer the divisions wherever you want let's buff our army with elder 10% offense and then things will start going a lot quicker here looks like Danzig is going to fall soon our Battle lines got a little disrupted here. And then we're going to take Krakow. We just formed our intel agency. And in 30 days, you're going to get your first operative. And you can have the operative form... Um, an intel network in the country that you're attacking and that actually will allow you uh for the battle plans to um work a little better as i said before another trick that you can use is this is probably for another video as well but if you form the cryptology department you can get a cryptology bonus against your opponents and the cryptology bonus will grant you land combat bonuses actually so it's pretty cool okay, these divisions don't really have a lot of equipment left we must be running down our opponent pretty well here as you can tell i wasn't fully prepared for this here's an operative i usually like uh the operatives with the hat the hat man or the uh, the kissy face, the seducer own operative detection chance factor negative 20. That means that they they won't get caught as easily. So I like the kissy face ones. It looks like I can have her operate there. And start uh, building up the intel agency there. So we need to get into Krakow. in order to capitulate Poland. Oh, looks like France has some divisions over here. We're just gonna kind of rumble forward here. This is not the optimal way of attacking. I'm just doing this because for expediency with the video. But typically, I'd have all the bonuses. I'd have the military staff filled up. I'd have fighters and things of that nature. So this attack would go a lot better. We're going to need to take brest Litovsk because that's where... One of the capitals will most likely go. We need to take and hold that. 
There must be some uh, points in Brest-Litovsk because it's interesting how the AI had uh, France's army head over there. So the AI must know that there's, let's see how many points there is. So when we're talking about capitulation, Each one of these towns or provinces has a point value that basically uh, contributes to your opponent's capitulation chance. Victory points. So Lao Lo has three, and Brest-Litovsk, hover over that. Oh, it's not going to tell me because it's already in enemy-held territory, but Pinsk has one. So you want to kind of steer yourself to the the higher VP areas. And um, this has 20 because it's the current capital. So you mainly just steer towards the capitals. That's the way to go. Now, Poland will probably capitulate after we take Krakow here. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Get the tank. Tanks don't typically do as well in cities. France pushed from the other side. No, they're holding Maginot. Um, we're not holding up this this side of the front that well. You have to do some mi manual micro occasionally. See where the star went to. It doesn't look like they have a star, so they should capitulate fairly quickly here. So if they did not capitulate and you don't have a capital, just keep rolling for all the towns and cities. Okay, capital went to Patak. So after I take Patak, it should be lights out for the poles. It would actually be better if I pause micro and stop uh, the encirclement there. And then boom. We capitulated France. There's no peace conference because Poland joined the Allies. So the war still goes on for them. Um, but you saw that we're able to get equipment after we capitulate the country. So that's going to be out it for this video. That is kind of all the beginner slash more advanced uh, hints and tricks that I can think of now for land combat. And... Um, you always want to look at your country's bonuses that they receive from their military staff because that's huge. And then you also want to look at the bonuses that you receive from your land doctrine. I have videos on um, which land doctrine to use so you can look that up. But those will further buff uh, the functioning of your army. And um, you can also get bonuses with air doctrine as well. So an uh, interesting point just to get your thinking caps on is that some air doctrines allow to give you air support mission efficiency. So air support missions, as you remember, is the tank on close air support here. And so if you boost the air support mission efficiency, you should boost the amount of attacks that these TAC bombers get with their close air support mission if that makes any sense. So there are many various other ways of buffing your land combat that you need to look into on your own, but those were the basics. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and I'll see you on the next one.